That man is our greatest enemy. Hello, and welcome to Visions of the Past. My name is Andrew, and I am the host of this Assassin's Creed lore podcast. This is episode 27, and today we're going to talk about the man who Altair was talking about with this quote, Robert de Saab. Robert is one of those characters in Assassin's Creed that is based on a historical character. And because of this, that means there is a historical aspect and then the in-universe aspect. Historically, Robert de Saab was known as Robert IV de Saab and was born in 1150 in Seba-sur-Sarth. And uh, please forgive me, that pronunciation is probably wrong. This city at the time was in the province of Anjou within France, though it would come under the rule of the English crown four years later when the Count of Anjou, Henry II, rose to the English throne. He was born to Robert III de Saab and Hersen de Anthias. Again, apologies for the pronunciation. Nothing is really known about his youth other than marrying Clemence de Mayini and being the Lord of Saba when his father died around 1152. In 1173, Robert would support Henry the Young King in the revolt of 1173 to 1174 against Henry II, but somehow he would remain in favor with Henry II's eventual successor, King Richard I. As in the spring of 1190, King Richard would choose Robert to be one of the leaders of his crusading fleet that left from Dartmouth. Robert would lead this navy to the Mediterranean, lay siege to the city of Acre, which fell on July 12, 1191, and participate in the Battle of Arsuf on September 7, 1191. Besides these two battles, 1191 was a huge year for Robert, as he was elected as the Grand Master of the Templar Order. He was lucky to be elected as Grand Master because he wasn't a member of the Order when his predecessor, Gerald de Rigord, was captured and beheaded during the Siege of Acre on October 4, 1189. But, because the senior knights of the order used this as a reason to review the rules about active service of the Grand Masters, the election of a new Grand Master would be delayed for over a year. This delay ended up giving ample time to give Robert the time to enter the order and to be elected Grand Master. By the end of 1191, King Richard agreed to sell Cyprus to the Templars for 25,000 pieces of silver. Robert would be the lord of Cyprus for two years until he gave, or sold, as the reports differ, to Guy de Lucien, the king of Jerusalem, who at the time was without a kingdom. Robert would die on September 23, 1193, in Arsuf, Palestine. Within Assassin's Creed, we find Robert within Assassin's Creed and Assassin's Creed Secret Crusade. But he is also mentioned in Assassin's Creed Revelations, and a painting of him can be seen in Assassin's Creed IV, Black Flag. Robert de Saab was voiced by Jean-Philippe Dandenaud. From what is known in the series about Robert, we don't have any information on him before his rise to Templar Grand Master in 1190. In July of 1191, Robert and a group of Templars would enter Solomon's Temple beneath the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, looking to retrieve a piece of Eden. As Robert sent men to retrieve the artifact, The group would be ambushed by a group of assassins that consisted of Altair ibn La'ahad and the brothers Malik and Qadar al-Sayef. Altair would approach Robert head-on and would fail in his assassination attempt. Robert would throw him from the room, causing a rock slide that would block the entrance with rubble. The Templars would then engage with the remaining assassins, killing Qadar and injuring Malik. Even with his injury, Malik would be able to steal the artifact and returned to the assassin mentor, Al-Mualim. Robert would be determined to recover the artifact and would pursue Malik from Jerusalem all the way to the fortress of Masayef. When Robert arrived with his army, two assassins would defect and open the gates, allowing them to storm the village. The Templars would drive the assassins back to the fortress, and when Robert arrived to the gates, would demand the return of the artifact, saying that it was his property. Amu Alim would refuse, stating that Robert had no claim to the artifact. Robert, on the other hand, would claim that Amu Alim was playing a dangerous game and the Templars could just simply wait them out. Amu Alim would ignore the threat and eventually signal Altair to activate a trap that would send several large logs to fall from a tower 
onto the Templars, killing many and scattering the rest, forcing Robert to retreat. Between the months of June and August, Altair would hunt and kill high-ranking members on both sides of the Third Crusade, all of which worked with Robert to create a new world. After Altair killed eight other Templars, Robert would realize that he was Altair's next target. He would see this as an opportunity to stop the assassin by publicly scheduling himself to attend the funeral of one of the targets, Majd Adin, in Jerusalem. Then he would send his personal steward, Maria Thorpe, to stand in for him to create a trap for Altair. While Maria set and sprung the trap on Altair, Robert would join King Richard on the battlefield at Arsuf. While standing beside King Richard during the course of the Battle of Arsuf, he would try to convince his king to ally himself with Salah ad against their common enemy, the assassins, as they caused numerous deaths on both sides of the conflict. Altair, though, would fight his way through the battle, eventually arriving at the Crusaders' camp. When he arrived, he would try to convince King Richard that the men he killed were Templars, and that Robert was going to rebel against him. This, Robert would defend against by saying the assassins are master deceivers. King Richard would order a trial by combat because he was unsure who to believe and would leave it to God on who was speaking the truth. This duel, which was fought on September 7, 1191, would see Robert as a match for Altair, though he would fall in this duel. During his final moments, Robert would inform Altair that there was not nine that found the artifact, but ten, and the tenth was Al-Mualim, and that Altair was set to kill the nine because Al-Mualim wanted to keep the apple to himself, and now that he was dying, Altair was the last to know about the apple, and it would be next on Al-Mualim's death list. I don't mind Robert as an antagonist of Assassin's Creed. He is smart and methodical, and at the same time seems to want to change the world for good. But we also don't spend a lot of time with the character, and I would have liked to have had more time with him, but hunting his Templar brothers does fill out what his goals are in a way that makes you wonder if you are really doing the right thing by hunting them. The differences between the historic person and the Assassin's Creed character work well for him within the series. Could they have set his death closer to his historical death? Sure, but it's something that works out well to show that history isn't always truth, and it makes you wonder why the writers of this history would want to remove Armand Bouchard's time as Grand Master. Could Robert have been shown as an older person as he would have been in history? Sure, but we're only looking at about a 15 year difference in how he looked and how old he really was. There are many other characters in the series that look even younger than this, and to show him seemingly closer to the age of Altair made him a great foil within the game. Robert is one of only three characters shown in Assassin's Creed who were historically Templars, along with the aforementioned Bouchart and Jacques de Molay. When you look at Robert from the prism of the Assassins, he is a character that you love to hate, and when you look at it from the Templar side, he is one of the Templars that embodies their ideas of order through control. So much so that he doesn't see gender. He's one of the few people within the time period that would take a woman like Maria Thorpe to be his personal steward. It's something that you just wouldn't see during that time frame, no matter how good of a fighter or anything. He knew that she was a woman, yet still let her be his steward. It's something you just don't see in history, especially during the Crusades. And it's something that I really appreciate for the character. It gives us more of this trying to make the world better through control, and that if you share his idea, it doesn't matter if you're man or woman or anything else you have a place in that new world order if you are willing to do what needs to be done. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for new episodes. If you love the Visions of the Past podcast, I'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give a review on iTunes. If you have any questions about Assassin's Creed or topics that you would like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at visions underscore AC. And you can find those links in this episode's show notes. Until next time, my assassin friends, make sure to follow the creed. And to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.